Lion Guard. Episode review. Greetings, fellow Pride Landers, Birdie Boiler Bashers, and the like. I'm Brandon the Bambi Man, and welcome to Golden Ticket Reviews, where if it's classic or crap you see through it, I review it. Hey kids, guess what? It's Lion Guard Review Time! Yay! Louder! My sentiments, Drac. Man, this has been a long time coming, at least a few months, hasn't it? Guess I've just been too focused on movies currently playing in theaters and asking myself such philosophical questions like... You wanna be a little house doggy? That will never get old to me. Well, I'm back and I'm ready to take a look at the fourth Lion Guard episode, Can't Wait to be Queen which sadly does not contain the Bohemian Rhapsody or We Will Rock You Instant Fail. This episode focuses on Kion's little sister, Kiara, which is kind of weird. I thought she already got her own movie. But hey, if Sophia, Grace, and Rosie can go from being talk show hosts to getting their own film, surely a not annoying kid from a decent movie can get an entire episode of a TV series dedicated to her. Honestly, I feel kind of bad for Sophia Grace, actually. I mean, she could grow up to become the next English queen, her political figure, and no matter what she ends up doing, she has to live with the fact that her management team decided to release this to the public. <laughs> but I digress. Let's take a look at how the daughter of a king takes a handle of things, and the Lion Guards can't wait to be queen. But just how do you one-up the epic opening rain scene from the previous episode? Well, you bring something truly more epic to open up a show with. Sibling rivalry. Well, forgive me for not leaping for joy. Bad back, you know. It would appear that Kyan and Kiara are arguing over a scratching post because if you remember... But Kiara, if I don't keep them sharp, they don't say shiny. Soon enough, Simba arrives to inform Kion that she'll be the substitute ruler while him and Nala go and visit the elephants. So is there some sort of royal pachyderm ceremony he has to overlook, or is there a dispute that only the king can break up, or is he visiting one of the members of Colonel Hathi's patrol? I mean, why is Simba going to visit the elephants? We have a funeral to attend. My friend Amanifu passed away. Come again? We have a funeral to attend. My friend Amanifu passed away. I did See, I'm all discombobulated. I can't think straight. I mean, I know people passing on is kind of a staple to the Lion King name, but wow. For a series intended for much younger viewers, this is quite dark, isn't it? It's like if in Gravity Falls, Grunkle Stan suddenly had to attend the funeral of one of his old chums. And I'm not talking about the whack Stan funeral he held. That... that was just cray cray. Anyway, after the death of an elephant is revealed, pss, ugh, Simba informs Kiara of his belief that she is ready to test her queenliness as we then cut to Simba and Nala leaving for the elephant territory with Zazu, and apparently it seems there will be a problem with this funeral. Simba has to do part of his eulogy in Elephantese. Wait, what? Elephants and their traditions. And they take those traditions very seriously, sire. Oh, believe me, I know. It has to be perfect. True, but it's just one phrase. With all this drama surrounding his beloved king, Zazu decides to lift Simba's spirits and up his positivity by singing a little ditty about the great duties he has as king. It's Pretty much just a less annoying version of the Morning Report song seen in the Lion King Special Edition. Just think less bad animal puns and more Rob Lowe belting out. Doesn't that just give you a good feeling? Meanwhile, at Pride Central Station, everyone but Kion is excited for the temporary reign of Queen Kiara, especially Ono, who is taking time out of his guardly duties to become Kiara's major domo, as it were. Her Majesty! Now there's the face of a man who just witnessed a Rob Schneider comedy. But it appears there's a bunch of bees that are on the attack and are in the way of a bunch of elands ready to pass through where their hive is stuck and the guard is sent out to settle it. Well, this news can only bode them so well. 
didn't have to. You're not the queen. <laughs> oh, snap. You just got served lunch and dinner. Mm-hmm. Okay. Lion Guard, let's move out. Back at As the Main Turns, Zazu is tutoring Simba on how to speak the one elephantese phrase needed to make his eulogy complete, to the effect that this happens. Had good on him. It means he was a good elephant. Well, that is certainly true. Amanifu had much good on him. Mufasa never told me I'd have to endure elephant speak before. And now you just have to say it in elephantese. I can't say it in elephantese, and do you know why? Because I am not an elephant! The Lion King, serving the circle of life, caring for the animals, big and small, and roaring at servants who don't do his bidding. Well, at the very least, at least it isn't the teacher screaming at the student. Blé de la blé de blue blah blé. You're not... You're not, you're, again, you're, you're not speaking French! <laughs> Actually, this does bring up an interesting point. Remember in the movie Avatar when Jake Sully used Satui to translate his English into Navi in order to rally the people of Home Tree to fight against the Sky People? Well, why doesn't Simba use Zazu as his English to Elephantese translator during the eulogy? I mean, I know the elephants have traditions, but... If the king can't pronounce what he feels should sound correct during what's supposed to be an emotional tribute, why can't he just get his indentured servant to help him out during that one point? Heck, maybe he could help to translate his entire speech to Elephantes. I mean, wouldn't that show his respect to these kind pachyderms and not sound disrespectful to their culture? Maybe I'm just spitballing. Besides, Zazu is beyond helping his king at this point after being violently knocked out of a tree by him. I mean, I know he just lost an elephant friend, but wow! Back with the guard, it would appear that they are about to move the beast from the path by the use of brute force. That's not how the force works. Right you are, Han Solo, which of course results in obvious joke in 3, 2, 1. Oh, no, not the beast! Not the beast! Ah! I don't have my eyes! My eyes! Ah! A small problem? It wasn't a total disaster. Bees were just practicing their, uh, finger painting. Yeah, that's it. They're regular Picassos. They are. <laughs> it did manage to run up the elements. Eventually. Most of them. Some of them didn't want to come with us. I don't think they liked us. Here comes the Lion God. Totally distrusted. Meanwhile, at John Jazz's lair, Mazingo has arrived to inform him of the honey-filled disaster in the Pride Lands. This transitions us to... the elephant funeral. Curse this show and its ability to give us amazing emotional moments. Where's the warthog? Well, right before we witness the eulogy, we then see Mazingo arrive at Pride Rock in order to trick Kiara into meeting Janja at the edge of the Outlands for a peace offering. <laughs> Janja wants peace? Oh, it's what he's always wanted. <sighs> Sadly, your brother and his guard, well, forgive me for saying so, my queen, but your brother can be quite stubborn. <laughs> What you consider to be attempted animal eating is secretly playful symbolism, my pet. When you plainly see the hyenas chase the animals in predator-like states, it's secretly a way of saying that they are with the land of pride. They are attempting peace with the land of pride. You can trust me, young cub. Or is it cubess? I'm not too fond of lion nomenclature. Naturally, Kayan ain't too thrilled with this sister's chess pawn move. Yara, you can't trust Mazingo or Janja. You just can't stand the thought that I might be right. Don't you know the only real bird you can trust is a raven? Don't believe me. Just ask the monkey. You're a baboon. And I'm not. <laughs> anyway, after a little advice from Grandfather Mufasa and finding out his sister is left to meet Janja, the guard assembles to save her. We then transition to the most emotional tribute ever to a fallen friend. I knew Amanifu a long time. I 
will remember him fondly. He was truly a person who, beyond a shadow of a doubt, was kind and noble, and threw his tusks in whenever the circle of life needed it. He meant what he said, and he said what he meant. And an elephant like him was faithful. One hundred percent. Atukute Amani Na Firaha Yamilele Katika Timbo Imbinguni Amina. Because, as you elephants say, Ihe Kaka Pano Tu. Simba, you had one job. I think you just said he had poop on him. <laughs> he always did have poop on him. <laughs> and it always made us laugh. <laughs> he always made us laugh. So, this dead elephant was used as both a pest friend, the royal leader, and also a Toilet humor gag used as a metaphor for remembering the good times with people who have since passed on. I don't know whether these writers are really brilliant or just totally bonkers. Not the Disney Afternoon Show. Time for the inevitable hyena battle to begin. Kiara, welcome! I'm so happy you considered my proposal! <laughs> Going so soon? But you're to be our guest! We'll not make Beauty and the Beast reference! We'll not make Beauty and the Beast reference! Kion! You're here! Of course! Oh, ain't this a touching family reunion? Oh, oh ain't that beautiful? I think I'm getting all misty eyed here. Lion Guard Defend! Six on six. Forget it! <laughs> Janja! You were right about never trusting Janja. I should have listened to you about the beast. Oh, sure. Now he admits it. Next time, you're going into the snake pit by yourself. How did ruling the Pride Lands go? I'm sure she's going to be a great queen. Someday. <sighs> Thanks, Kion. Well, that was a pretty strong episode even if it was a doozy to get through. It had good voice acting, good morals, great emotion. Despite some questionably silly moments, this may very well be the strongest episode of the series thus far. But just wait until next time, because the next episode will start so far above great that the character it's featured isn't going to be able to fly high enough, I assume. I mean, I don't think birds can fly in space. Until next time, I'm Brandon the Bearman saying take care of yourselves, guys. I'll see you at the movies, and I feel the need to go hug some elephants. I mean, gosh. To be kind to your small person friends, every room may be somebody's mother. Be kind to any who on every speck. Anyone that might likely be your brother Oh, be kind to your small person friends As they float around from one place to another Remember, no matter how small That a person is a person is a person is a person That a person is a person after all Because I am not an elephant.